Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to what has turned out to be the sort of the most planned video I have ever done on this channel. Uh, this originally was just going to be a quick sort of, you know, maybe five, six minute long video about East Germany, East Berlin, the Berlin Wall, um, the GDR. It has turned into something a bit more epic this time uh, in that my sort of small collection that I had has ended up growing. Um, I started finding more things to get. I thought, yes, this would be good for the video. So I bought it. I was buying things from Germany. Um, I had stuff coming from Romania. So uh, yes, a video which was supposed to be out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, first part you are watching now, and there will be a second part. Uh, originally, this part was going to be part two, uh, but because some items have not arrived for the other part I want to talk about, I've decided to do this bit first. Now, you will notice there are some bits of concrete here. Uh, these are all original bits of the Berlin Wall. And what I was going to talk about was how you go about buying it in the first place, how much you sort of can be expected to pay and what you look for um, when you buy it. Now, if, if you're not going to Berlin on holiday, uh, next best thing is going to be buying it online and having it posted to you. Uh, sometimes you will get very, very lucky and people will have picked it themselves. So they, they will have hand picked it uh, back in the 90s and uh, you sort of get a photograph along with it and you know you're getting the, you know, the actual thing, the item. Now, what I have here is a mixture of items which were bought on eBay, items which were bought from an online seller who specializes in selling uh, Berlin Wall memorabilia, and then items which were sent to me uh, by people who handpicked them themselves back in the 90s. Now, the Berlin Wall was first constructed in August 1961. Now, the Berlin Wall has gone through very, you know, quite a few changes. The original Berlin Wall uh, surrounded Berlin, which was in East Germany. Now, for anybody who, who doesn't really know the Cold War uh, sort of geog you know, geography of Germany, uh, East and West, uh, East was controlled by the Soviet Union and West Germany was controlled by France, America and Great Britain. Uh, Berlin, obviously with the amount of history behind it from the Second World War, was not in the middle of the country. Berlin is in East Germany. So an agreement was reached that there would be an East Berlin and West Berlin. And uh, West Berlin again was controlled by France, America and Great Britain. And East Berlin was controlled by the Soviets. So they became two separate countries. West Berlin was part of, uh, you know, the, the Federal Republic of Germany and East Berlin was controlled by the Deutsche Demokratik Republic, so the GDR. Uh, the Berlin Wall, as many of us would know it now, uh, was not constructed in this way until, uh, well, early to mid 70s. Before that, it was barbed wire. It was wooden fences. It was basic ob obstacles like that. And in terms of the wall itself, the concrete structure, you would really only see that in Berlin and then in the greater, in the frontier of the inner German border then that, that stretched between the rest of Germany. Uh, that was more barbed wire fences, uh, chain link fences, uh, areas that had, uh, you know, habitation in it. They would also put concrete posts in and slatted concrete sections to sort of build the wall up. And then, you know, hundreds of guard towers everywhere with searchlights and guards and minefields and the anti-tank ditches and guard dog patrols, things like that there. So it was one of the other than, uh, you know, North Korea and South Korea, it was one of the most heavily guarded borders on Earth at the time. Uh, so when the wall eventually did come down uh, in November uh, 1989, uh, they started chipping away at it almost straight away. And if you want to go for a piece of the Berlin Wall, I would advise getting larger pieces rather than smaller pieces. Now you can see here, I have 
little bags here of smaller pieces. These were all self-collected. And, uh, you know, the, the, the composition of the Berlin Wall, there's calcite in there, there's quartz in there. So there's quite large bits of quartz. There's small little bits of calcite, which you can see. And then there's different colors of quartz. So we've got white quartz, we've got gray, blue quartz in there. So if you're buying a piece of the Berlin Wall, what you want to do is look at the photographs. If you can hold it in your hands, even better. But, you know, I can see the calcite in this. I can see the quartz in that. Um, and also it's aged as well. You can see with the concrete, this is concrete which would have been on the outside. So this is a flat face you can see here with this concrete. So we've got original paint on this. And um, this was self-collected. I bought this from someone who uh, provided a photograph uh, of them beside the Berlin Wall, which will be up on the screen now. And uh, they, uh, well, I bought this piece and this piece from them. And, you know, this is filled with calcite and quartz. And, uh, yeah, you can see where a bit of rebar was inside it there, the line where the rebar was. And one thing someone uh, someone did say to me recently is, you know, the Berlin Wall, you know, it's obviously going to be fake. You know, you're just buying a piece of demolished building. Well, there was so much Berlin Wall that there is enough of it uh, to give every single person on earth a tennis ball sized piece. So that just puts it in perspective how much there is. Now I'm going to put another couple of photographs up of pieces of the Berlin Wall uh, in a sort of a, a stonesmith's yard ready to be destroyed. And even with all those sections that they destroyed, there's still enough to provide huge pieces like this. And uh, if you think this bit's big, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll clear some space here and I'll let you see the sort of the prize in my collection of Berlin Wall pieces. So I'll move these out of the way and I'll bring this up. So that's uh, three kilograms worth of Berlin Wall. Now you can see here where it's weathered and you can see it's taken up all the sort of uh, natural con contamination from the air. So car fumes, exhaust fumes, smoke, things like that there. And again, filled with calcite and quartz. And I'll show you the back as well. You can see where a huge piece of rebar was in that. And uh, this came from sort of the largest supply of Berlin Wall in Germany. And uh, pieces like this, and pieces like this, uh, this is one of one of the older pieces that was bought. So you would buy this from a gift shop in uh, in Berlin, and you would buy it like that. That's quite a large piece now. You know, a piece like that nowadays, uh, you know, you're talking, you know, twenty or thirty pounds for a piece that size. Uh, I paid about forty pounds for that piece, mounted and posted from Germany. Uh, believe it or not, I paid twelve pounds for this huge piece on eBay, and then also it came with that little piece as well. Uh, I got these free. These were sent to me from someone who hand collected them back in the 90s. And this piece here, uh, I paid quite a bit for that. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal exactly how much I paid for it, but I was sent photographs of the section of wall that they chipped that off. And in fact, I'll, I'll show you a little model of the wall, um, which I have here. So, that's what the wall actually looked like. And you can see from the side there, the large feet it had. So this part would have faced out. So that would have faced out into the west. And this part would have been on the east. And it was painted white on the back so that at night time, the lights, anybody hiding up against it that was trying to climb over it, you'd be easily seen. And then it had a piece of pipe on the top, a bit of concrete pipe, uh, that uh, meant that it was you know quite hard to climb over it was you know slippy so if you try to put your hands on it you would slip over or you couldn't throw a grappling hook or something over it and the uh, original berlin wall stood 12 feet high and just under four feet wide so you can see what i mean about there being so many you know there was about 97 miles of berlin wall and it's just it's incredible that something which stood for you know blocking a country you know in half is here in my hands it is really a piece of you know it is it's cold war history 
in my hands here. This is original paint. And uh, they sent me photographs of their sort of their factory. Uh, well, yeah, they call it their factory where they have all the pieces of Berlin wool in it. And uh, it's amazing seeing it all sitting there. And they just are chipping their way through it and uh, putting it in postcards, putting it into little plastic, uh, you know, Perspex capsules and things like that there. And the way they do it with this, uh, they stick it onto a little, you know, plinth and then you can have it on display. But yeah, that bit I was talking about the Berlin Wall there um, in the inner German border, that's how it would have been set up. This is a sort of information sheet for people that are planning to uh, to visit uh, the area, just to let you know that uh, there is uh, a border there and how it's set up. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite, a, even having all these, you know, I'm quite lucky that I've been able to get quite a, you know, this piece here is pretty incredible. Uh, it's it's really heavy. It's you know it's it's ridiculously heavy, and it's uh, I couldn't believe it when sort of I, I asked them. I said, "Listen, I would be interested in a larger piece. I know you sell sort of pieces this size and uh, little pieces this size stuck into perspex, but would you happen to have a piece that's not in perspex and it's a little bit bigger?" So I was given some up choices of bits, big bits they had. There was another piece which was a similar uh, sort of uh, shape. And then they offered me a, a full uh, segment. So that, that's what the Berlin Wall, they, they call these segments. So I was offered a full segment um, for, I believe, uh, it was 16,000 euros. Uh, but getting that, <laughs> I was tempted, believe me, <laughs> I was tempted. I was thinking of maybe getting a sort of a national lottery grant or something and getting one shipped over to Northern Ireland. But uh, yeah, I think that will be pretty expensive and a lot of paperwork I would need to fill in. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's pieces of the Berlin Wall. Now, what I'll show you here as well is this is quite nice. Um, I got this recently, and this is an award uh, that was given out to members of the Na National Volks Army, Volks Army, or the People's Army, National People's Army, which was the NVA, which was the army in East Berlin, and or in East Germany. And uh, they were given this if uh, them and civilian contractors took part in the construction of the Berlin Wall. So you can see the 13th of August 1961 and we'll have a little badge there as well and anybody who helped take part in the construction was uh, was given one of these badges and this medal and at the back of it if I can take it out carefully at the back it has the hammer and compass you can see the, the hammer and the compass then of the DDR so yeah, really nice little item. Um, now I'm gonna do a little jump cut and I'm gonna clear some of this away and I am going to talk about uh, Checkpoint Charlie. Okay, so Checkpoint Charlie. Uh, this part of the video was an added extra uh, and it's one of the reasons why this video ended up taking so long to come out in the first place. Uh, I was very, very lucky to get talking to uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael Rafferty. Uh, now, Michael enlisted in the US Army in 1984 and he was sent to Berlin in 1988. Uh, on the night the Berlin Wall fell, he was on duty at Checkpoint Charlie and he was one of the last non-commissioned officers in charge of Checkpoint Charlie. And Michael very, very kindly sent me over quite a few items, personal items to him. And I'll always be, I'll be internally grateful uh, for him doing that for me. And I'm just going to show off a few of them now. Um, as I'm talking, I will put up photographs that Michael himself took of the opening of Checkpoint Charlie and the, the people of East Germany and West Germany coming together. And while I'm doing that, yes, as I said, I will put up some photographs of that happening. Uh, now, Checkpoint Charlie was only for foreigner, foreigners, military personnel, personnel and uh, diplomatic staff to enter East Germany. Uh, if people from West Germany wanted to go into East Germany, you could do so by other checkpoints, but for vehicles, for members of the military, 
and for foreigners you have to go through Checkpoint Charlie and Checkpoint Charlie was right on the border inside Berlin between East and West Berlin. Now there were three border posts that were looked after by the French, American and British. Uh, the first one was Checkpoint Alpha and that was at the Helmstedt Marienborn crossing and that was at the crossing between West Germany and East Germany. So on that crossing you were driving along the Autobahn and then you would cross then a checkpoint alpha and that would bring you through East Germany. So you were encased on each side by the Berlin Wall and then you would get to uh, Dreilinden, which was right on the edge of uh, Berlin and that was West Berlin. So that was checkpoint Bravo. So you would drive through the American, British and French uh, checkpoint. You would then drive through the DDR checkpoint you would then drive through another DDR checkpoint and then you would drive through then the French, American and British checkpoint Bravo at Dreilinden. And then you had checkpoint Charlie then, which was the border between West Germany or West Berlin and East Berlin. And that was on Friedrichstrasse. So I will show you the bits that Michael has given me. So I think I, I'll talk about the book first. Now, Checkpoint Charlie, for doing a little bit of research for this video, was fantastic. Uh, written by Ian McGregor. Uh, Michael does feature in the book and he has signed it to me, which was very, very kind of him to do. Uh, really, really nice guy. I, I've talked to him quite a bit about his family history and he does have family ancestors who came from Northern Ireland um, or Ireland as it was then and emigrated to the United States of America. Uh, yeah, and just getting to talk to him and then discovering all the, then this box just arrived full of all these pieces was just amazing uh, with their Berlin Brigade patch. I have, I, I, I'm not 100% sure if this is original it does appear to be original. This military police hat, uh, which is really nice. And yeah, I'll put up and again, as I said, it photographs on the screen as I'm talking of uh, Michael himself wearing his hat. Uh, he sent me this really nice first day cover, Berlin Wall first day cover with these stamps and issued in 1990 to commemorate, uh, obviously, East and West Berlin coming together with reunification and uh, Germany becoming whole again. Put that up there. And he sent me this signed photograph of him standing at Checkpoint Charlie. And signed as well and a couple more stamps as well. He must have bought quite a few of these at the time. He sent me a a piece of the Berlin Wall from his own personal collection, which is fantastic. Comes in this uh, resin, but really nice to get that from him, especially. He sent me one of his challenge coins. Uh, this is quite different. This is uh, so non-commissioned officer in charge, military police, checkpoint Charlie, and then his details on the back. And then we have a proper U.S. Forces Berlin Brigade challenge coin. Really, really nice. So not too many of them about there, I would imagine. This is number 97. And as well, obviously, he sent me the book as well. And he sent me some newspapers and a few other items, uh, which I have sort of safely away now in uh, in bags like this and I'm waiting for a few more bags to come to sort of get everything totally safe but absolutely incredible um, obviously the photographs you see I've been putting up on the screen as I've been talking about these items an incredible time in history and I just want to thank Michael from the bottom of my heart for sending me all of this at the time I uh, I didn't expect him to send me I, I thought I was getting a, a photograph and I just opened this huge box and it was just full of items and absolutely amazing but uh yeah the berlin wall and a pretty incredible time in history and i hope to get over to berlin i have been in germany before but i've never been in berlin and i cannot wait until lockdown is over and we're able to all sort of go on holiday again and i can get over 
and and see some of these places for myself. Um, obviously, where the Berlin Wall, where Checkpoint Charlie is now, uh, the Checkpoint Charlie that you see there um, was a late was the last type. There was three different types of Checkpoint Charlie building, and the Americans always said that the Berlin Wall would was never going to be there forever. It was always going to be temporary, and uh, that's why the the building was just a porter cabin. The East German side, they had a massive structure and over on the West German side, they kept it totally portable, easy to take away, just to show that, you know, we know that the Berlin Wall isn't going to stand forever and eventually it will fall. And uh, when they lifted it away, the, che the Checkpoint Charlie away and put it on the back of a lorry and drove it away, underneath was cobblestones, the, the original foundations and uh, Michael and uh, a number of the other border guards collected up some of the foundation stones and walked symbolically across the border and handed them to the uh, East German guards. And uh, Michael did keep one and uh, he sent me a photograph of it recently. I was actually reading about it in the book about him doing it. And it was about one o'clock in the morning and I sent him a message uh, through Twitter just to say, listen, I read about this in the book and did you keep one? And he said, yes, I did. And here's a photograph of it. Uh, which I think is, is amazing that I'm able to read about somebody in a book and then, you know, straight away I talk to them. So that's the power of the internet and social media. It does, there's a lot of bad things it does, but uh, this is one of the times where it does something good. And uh, yeah, really, really good friend now I've made with him. And I, I hope to meet him one day uh, once we're through the, the back of this COVID thing. Uh, I've offered for him to come over to Northern Ireland to visit his sort of ancestral home and uh, to stay with me. And uh, yeah, I hope maybe if he does come over, uh, I'll do a video on it. I'll do a little video chat with him. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about his experiences in Germany around that period and, and what it was like before and what it was like after. Uh, Michael had made a really, really interesting video uh, to send home to uh, sort of friends and family. And I link that as well in the, in the description. It's, uh, it's pretty long, but it's really, really worth watching. Um, it's it's Berlin before the wall fell, and it just shows you, you know, just a, it's it's really really interesting to watch because it's it's just two guys doing their job and, and walking about, and it's all they know. It's all they know is the Berlin Wall and east and west, and uh, it's totally unbiased. Really really interesting to watch the, uh, these two American guys walking through Berlin east and west. But yeah, listen, folks. Uh, this was a bit of a labour of love to do it. Um, if I've got things wrong, sorry about that. But, you know, I, uh, I I really enjoyed collecting everything that I've got. You know, being sent this by Michael, collecting the other bits. Um, the second part will be all about uh, the Deutsche Demokratik Republic. Um, I'll be showing off currency. I'll be showing off other collectibles and uh, sort of just showing what is out there. It's, you know, it's something that I'd never really collected and a few little bits and pieces, little bits of the Berlin Wall that I've had for a couple of years, but I, uh, I didn't really do it properly. And in lockdown, I, uh, I find that there was a massive, massive market out there for, for buying pieces of, uh, you know, East German and East and West Berlin collectibles. And yeah, really, really interesting. But listen, folks, thank you all very, very much for watching. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.